Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Eric, also known as Dad Hats. So we're going to pick up right where we left off last video at the start of session 3, which is where I really start driving somewhat decently. Like I mentioned last video, we have the 4.3 final drive from a 2017 BRZ, so we should be a little bit quicker around the lap. The downside is, we'll be switching gears more often, but the added acceleration really helps this car on track. It just pulls the car out of these corners so much faster. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to go over lap times and compare my best lap time with the 4.1 final drive versus the 4.3. I think a little bit of data review can be super interesting, assuming of course we don't dig too far into it, but let me know what you guys think. Alright, let's hop into the video. So as we cross the finish line, we get a 16.5, which is a pretty decent lap right off the rip. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Um, I think our first lap was technically our out lap. Second lap was getting around slow traffic. So lap three was my first proper lap where I had enough space to set a hot lap. So at this point in the lap, we're about a half second up on our personal best. There's a slight chance we could dip into those very high 115s, but watch what happens next. So this must be that other BRZ that the track marshal was referencing earlier. Come on. Did you give a point by in the front straight? No. Alright. Yeah. So quick check in the rear view mirror, and there's two other cars waiting behind me. So this guy was kind of holding up at least, what, three, four cars? Um, so yeah, just so you guys know, in advanced, you're supposed to be able to give a point by in any corner, and I think they do mean any corner, including the light bulb, even though it's a little bit difficult. Um, so yeah, there really should be no excuse in advanced class to be able to hold people up like this. So as you can see, I'm letting the Hondas through um, and just lifting off for them, because at this point I think they're much quicker than me, and I was going to see if I can keep up with them as best as I can. We're going to take a little pause here because I just want to let you guys know that I just launched channel memberships. The first tier allows you to differentiate yourself in the comments section as well as getting priority from me to reply to any of your comments or questions. Tier 2 channel members will gain early access to my videos a few days early as well as polls that will influence the direction of the channel in the future. And if you're a huge supporter of this channel and you ever want it to drive against me, this is your chance. Tier 2 gives you some time to race against me in iRacing or Assetto Corsa, whatever you want. If you would like to support the channel and help to see it grow, check out the link in the description. Thanks. As we turn in here we just barely barely clip that curb and you can see it unsettles the car just enough that it sent me to the left and I had to bail out of the throttle. Since we were unable to carry a lot of speed onto the straight let's point that Mustang by as soon as possible. So here I think I trail braked a little bit too much, got a little more rotation than I was anticipating, and then I go back to throttle, the car wasn't settled, and then the rear started to step out ever so slightly. 
and that mistake really hurts. He's definitely going to pull hard on us in this next section. This next lap is actually my new personal best, and since that gut at Honda was kind of coming out of the pits the last lap, it's kind of in my mind and I'm trying to push as hard as I can to kind of put some distance on him since I think he was pretty quick earlier. So as you can see, we're not running a crazy quick time. We're about a tenth up, you know, kind of giving it back and forth depending on how well I'm doing in certain corners. But uh, this next braking zone, I'm really starting to push deeper and deeper. You can see how hard I am on the brakes for how long. And it's a little bit of an unnerving feeling since that downhill section does sort of unsettle the car. The, the rear wants to get loose there. So you kind of have to be brave and be able to break as late as you can and then I gained about three tenths there and was able to carry that speed and you can see I'm about six tenths up on my personal best. So we ended up crossing the line with a 116.00 which honestly very very surprised at that this car has just been getting quicker and quicker the more mods i throw at it it's been very nice but i would have loved to see that 115. all right so real quick let's look at some data so on screen now you can see that my optimal time was a 115.57 and that my personal best was a 116.5 typically i can get within two or three tenths of my optimal time but it's just kind of crazy to think that there's that much time left on the table that i can uh, really squeeze out of this car the 4.3 final drive ratio is really putting in some work. That extra torque is actually noticeable coming out of corners, especially carrying that speed onto a straight. I can't wait to try it out at some other tracks where top speed matters even more. I actually have Pocono coming up the 14th, and then NJMP Thunderbolt on the 22nd, so stay tuned for those videos. So I actually want to take this time to look at some data real quick, and I don't want to make anyone's eyes glaze over, so we're going to make this quick. I just want to show you two corners. This first corner is actually where we're coming down out of, uh, off the hill. So this is turn five and then coming into turn six. So obviously on my new personal best, I got a bit of a better exit. You can see I carry that all the way to about a two mile an hour uh, different top speed. And then let's move on to the straight here. So this is the last corner of NJMP Lightning, also known as the light bulb. And you can see, again, I carry just a little bit more speed, but more than likely, it's just straight up acceleration. And I carry it all the way to the end, and you can see about a three mile an hour difference. So yeah, pretty cool. I think that pretty much guarantees that uh, the diff is working as I thought it would and as I intended. And honestly, the weak point of these BRZs is just I need more top speed and more acceleration. So gearing is just one way to do that instead of uh, you know going the turbo route. And I think in terms of power, I'm kind of maxed out right now on the NA setup that I have.
I didn't see it. No. Ugh. Fuck, dude. <laughs> so that Mustang broke down yet again. That's two sessions in a row. And I, I just, I feel like I got absolutely robbed of that 115. I feel like there was maybe just a tenth in there. Ah, getting that 116.00 is just... It's a really decent time, but I just want to see the number tick over to a fresh, you know, a 115. Um, would have absolutely loved to see that. And uh, yeah, to be so close just kind of hurts, especially to go out like that. But that reaction honestly was really tame. When I got out of the car, I was so animated. I was explaining to my fiance who was there hanging out at the track with me what was going on. And oh, dude, I was just, I feel like I got absolutely robbed. But there's just so much time to gain. You know, I just, I hate track days. They're just too addicting. Finding that time is just such a great feeling, but that just leaves more room next time we come to the track. Before we sign off here and close out the video, um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for uh, coming up to me at the track. Um, I never really thought I'd be recognized doing this, especially because like 99% of the time you don't see my face, but um, I know a bunch of you guys know what the car looks like. So um, yeah, it's totally cool with me if you guys want to come say what's up. If you see me, it's not weird or anything. Uh, Sometimes I might be fiddling with damper settings or rushing off to a session, but I'll definitely try and talk to you guys as much as I can. With that said, my next track days, I think I mentioned, are May the 14th at Pocono, the 22nd at NJMP Thunderbolt, and I might be going to a private track day uh, at NJMP Lightning the 31st, I believe. Also, fun fact, spectators are free for track nights, so if you're new to track days and just want to see how fun it is or how it's run, uh, that's something you could potentially do. You just gotta sign the waiver to enter NJMP, let's say, and uh, I think Pocono's the same. And then you're just good to go. You can just come hang out. So, um, yeah, you guys are totally welcome to do that. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. You know, come out, say hi, whatever you want. But, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.